So I want to give you a quick look at how to build your own tabs interaction. What we're looking at here is how my tabs interaction started out. It's actually just one slide. I've got a base layer and it shows my intro and then I've got these three additional layers that I created for my other content. And you can create your own layers by clicking on this new layer button down here in the lower right. And a good habit when you do that is to name your layers because that just makes it a little easier to stay organized and select the right stuff later when you're setting up your triggers. So you can double click on any of these layer names and type whatever text you want. You can also see I've added some content to my layers. I've got some, you know, images, movies, buttons, things like that. And on my base layer, what I've also inserted is these three shapes, and these are gonna become my clickable tabs. And for these, I just use the insert shape tool, and then I drew three rounded rectangles here, and then type some text onto them. But another option that you might like to try is Storyline's built-in buttons for your clickable tabs instead. And you can get to those by going to the insert tab, and then choosing button, and then you can draw you know, a button right on your slide and then position it as one of your tabs. And a lot of people like these because what happens is when you create a built-in button, down here in the States panel, you can see Storyline creates all of these states for you to make it behave like a button. So that's kind of nice. It might save you a little bit of time. In my situation though, because I used a custom state or a custom shape, what I did is in my states panels, I added my own state. So I have a hover state that makes the text black and then I've got this selected state, which is kind of unique. I moved the um, object over to the left a little bit to offset it. And then I also animated this little triangle to appear in my selected state. Now, if you're not familiar with states, we've got a tutorial that shows you how to add and edit states on your own object. So definitely check that out if you need a little bit more guidance. Okay, another tip on naming, just like you can name your layers, you can also name any objects on your slide. And again, that just makes it easier to stay organized when you're setting up your triggers. So for example, I've got this um, tab selected here on my slide and on my timeline, I can come down here and double click and give it a, a different name if I want to. So I've just named mine tab one, tab two, and tab three. And we'll see how those names come in handy in just a second. All right, one more thing that you might want to do here on the timeline is on your individual layers, you might want to turn off the visibility of some of the stuff on this base layer here. Like I didn't really want this heading or this text or this picture to appear on my slide layer. So what I did is on my layer, I select the layer and then go to my timeline. You'll see this line here called base layer objects and you can expand that to show everything on your base layer. And you can see I've turned off the visibility of a couple of things. One of them is that text box. So watch what happens when I show that again. You can see how it would look really funny. It'd be all overlapped and it wouldn't look right. So that's why I've turned off a couple of those items. And you might want to do the same. Okay, so our content is in place and now we can go ahead and hook up our triggers. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my base layer, select my first tab, and then over here in the triggers panel, I'm gonna click create a new trigger. And now we tell Storyline what we wanna have happen. And in this case, the action is we're gonna show the layer called layer one when the user clicks tab one. And that's all we need to do for that trigger. Now I could do the same steps for these other two, but what I'm gonna do instead is a shortcut. I'm gonna click this copy button and then select my other two tabs and then click paste. And that's gonna paste that same trigger to those other objects. Now I just need to change the layer that gets revealed. So tab two should show layer two and tab three, layer three. And now we can preview this and see what we get. So here's our tabs and then we can click on these to reveal our additional content. Now an interesting thing with this example is that you know how I made the selected state look quite a bit different. You can, you know, it's offset and it goes over to the left here with this triangle. Well, this is cool, but what's happening is that once I select one of these tabs, it stays selected until I click it again. And this just looks kind of funny. What I really want to have happen is one tab looks selected at a time rather than all of them like this. And we can do that with a tool called a button set. And the button set is going to make it so that only one of those objects can be in its selected state at a time. And that way it'll look right. So what we're going to do is select all three of our tab objects and then right click choose button set and then we're going to assign these to button set one or you could create a new set if you want we'll just go with the default name and now that we've done that what happens is when we preview or publish we can really um, only click and you know make one of these selected at a time so that way they behave the way i intended so there you go in just a couple minutes you can set up a tabs interaction in articulate storyline